Hey, welcome back to 5 and 630. So D.C.'s mayor wants to increase the tax on ride-hailing services like Uber and Lyft to help fund Metro. It would jump the rate, which is at 1% right now, to 4.75%. No doubt it's going to have a big impact on people by driving those prices. That's right. So are riders actually being punished for choosing a product more to their liking? Michael Sargent from the Heritage Foundation joined us tonight. Michael, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. You had a piece that ran in the Washington Post. You are not a fan of... of charging folks this what is it how what is the the jump from one percent to four point five percent if they use one of these ride hailing services to, to help fund metro Why? We, well it's they're nearly quintupling the rate right. and it's also they're not actually going and looking and saying well what's wrong with metro how can we fix it they're saying um yet again here is more money and we're going to add insult to injury by also taxing the people who are trying to use the alternative way of getting around mm -hmm. and we've seen metro um we've seen the safe track shutdowns yep. they're announcing some more shutdowns for the blue and yellow line people rely on these ride sharing services to actually get where they're going because metro has let them down and let's remember dc is is not wamada you're looking at two separate entities wamada is the one that's cutting back service there are people who work in the service industry, uh, industries and, and many other industries in this city. Uh, and think about sports fans, too. On a Sunday night, if you have a game down at Nats Park, and that game, they, they ha they, in the sixth inning, they say, well, you got to go you know, catch a train at this point. So the bottom line is, and I know this is something the Heritage Found the Foundation it, it quite advocates against doing, we're, 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 we're taxing private industry, people who use a private industry, because of the shortfalls of a public entity. Exactly. And so, like I said in my piece, if a private company did this, tried to stick its competition with the bill while providing cu customers with a lackluster service, the politicians would go crazy. They'd scream and say, well, they should be going out of business. Mm -hmm. But when it's Metro, they're perfectly content with actually going to their constituents and saying, we need you to pay more uh, because of the political shortcomings of this organization. So what do you think is the solution here? What should the city be doing, the region be doing? And, and for that part, what should Metro be doing? Well, when you actually look at Metro's operating expenses, it's the most expensive expensive uh, heavy rail system in the United States to operate based on a per passenger basis. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing ridership go way down um, while costs are going up. So I think first before we say, all right, let's tax some people more to give more money to WMATA, we've got to go in and look and say, well, what exactly is going wrong right now? We saw them lose their place as the second busiest rail system mm -hmm. to the system in Chicago. And the system in Chicago employs uh, roughly half as many people. So we've got to go and say, well, where are costs maybe a little more than they should be? Um, what are riders wanting? What can we hear from them? And then in addition, we need to look at restructuring the bus network in DC. Uh, the, the city is laid out really nicely for a bus system. And I think that's one of the biggest areas of low hanging fruit um, that they have available to them, but they haven't done any of that. They just said, well, we need more money. Why not? I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. no, by all means, I think I that's mean, a... I mean, I just, I mean, it seems crazy to me. So you've got all these ideas, and it's just, why not? Why isn't there someone... There, there are political uh, barriers involved. The people who have the jobs at WMATA um, fight tooth and nail every time. They go in and say, well, how can we better structure our workforce? Um, and, and same with... Um, and it, it's just... Uh, you have an entrenched bureaucracy that's been around for, you know, 40, 50 years now, and they're very resistant to change, whereas a private company, they're focused on serving customers. WMATA is not necessarily there. They're focused on essentially the status quo. But when you talk about, pri and I know a lot of transit industries, that's, that seems to be a, 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 an option. You know, what, what, what can you turn to a private company? What can go private? But you look at private companies, I mean, yeah, they'll run, serv they, you know, you can run service to Pentagon City, you can run service to, to, to National Harbor, but some of these other areas that, that may be ignored, you know, some of the suburbs, some, some places where, is Southeast, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may, you may, not, may not have private companies that are willing to come in and, and, and shoulder the burden in some places like that. Yeah, and that's exactly what I'm saying, which is why we need to go and look at the bus system. Yeah. And we've seen this in city after city where uh, the cities uh, invest really heavily in rail because that's what's politically sexy, that's what politicians <laughs> like to do, and the bus system ends up being neglected and ridership falls down. We're seeing this in L.A. Uh, D.C., um, the bus ridership just this last year is down uh, more than it is on the rail system. And, wow. and it is a decent bus system, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. it could be better. All right. Michael Sargent. But the rails are sexy. <laughs> 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 Politically you, sexy. Thanks, Thanks Michael. Thanks for having me.